Thanks for having me. Mary, let, let me ask you kind of first out, out of the box here. Chris Redfern had criticized, the chairman of the Ohio Democratic Party had criticized Republicans several weeks ago for the shuffling around of candidates that they had on their side for the race for auditor. But that's exactly what happened here on the Democratic side. State Representative Jen Jennifer Garrison had been seeking this office, Secretary of State, for several months, if not longer. She was kind of pushed out of the way to make room for you and your candidacy. Uh, and I understand primarily that was because of social issues. Uh, Ms. Garrison is uh, pro-life on, on the abortion issue. Are, are you concerned that you are getting into this race really, really late? against a Republican who, by all accounts, looks like he's going to have a lot of money in the bank for a fall campaign. Um, I have to point out that we don't uh, even file our petitions till February 18th. And it's not unusual in these kinds of cycles to have, you know, shifting ebbs and flows. And uh, um, it's not unusual to have a primary. Uh, in this case, we'll find out if we have a primary on February 18th, but I would suspect not. And I'm delighted to uh, be the, uh, the candidate that uh, uh, the Ohio Democratic Party has uh, backed and that Governor Strickland is backed. How did, did you get a, uh, how did it happen? I mean, did you get I, a phone call? You're minding your own yeah. business, uh, <laughs> right? And then well, one day the phone rings and they, and they say to you, what? We think we well, can clear the primary? Here, yeah. or what? And I want to clarify something, too. Uh, you know, er, er, there's a lot of buzz, you know, amongst uh, people like us who buzz uh, <laughs> about uh, the social issue uh, aspect of this. Um, I, I believe that uh, that I was selected and I was courted for this because uh, because of my electability here uh, because um, I'm battle tested uh, and I think you you all know that uh, and uh, you talked about a slugfest this is this is going to be a, a high profile race uh, and uh, and people know that uh, I, I have the capability of uh, of uh, doing that race uh, that I have the capability of raising the money and uh, that I've got a great story to tell the voters here I've got. Uh, uh, I got a great resume to present to the voters, and I believe in the voters. Uh, mm -hmm. Obviously, I believe in the voters, and I think that they, uh, uh, given the right information will, and uh, the right uh, ability to vote, will uh, make the right choices here. In your announcement earlier this week, you made it a big point, a major part of your announcement mm -hmm. for Secretary of State, talking about clean elections and yeah. making sure that they're fair yeah. and that they're honorable. Yeah. But the thought that went through my mind as you were saying that, is that sort of an indictment of the current incumbent? I mean, after all, Jennifer Bruner, who's a member of your party, a right. Democrat, has right. held this office right. for four years. So when you right. talk about election reform, is there something that has not been done on her watch well, or something that's yeah. happened during her watch? It, she has done a tremendous job, and I, I have to point to the last presidential election and how things went very smoothly compared to the, the previous presidential election. She has had to, uh, to work very hard to get things cleaned up and on the right track, and I'm going to continue those reforms. You know, the, uh, in part of being in an administrative office like this, uh, something that I know very well as being a clerk of Common Pleas Court is that you have to stress continuous improvement. Uh, and if you don't, you're falling behind. There's always ways to make it, to make things better. We've got right now uh, technology that's available that we're trying to apply in the clerk of court's office here that can be applied to the, the work of the Secretary of State. I'm looking forward to uh, making sure those things happen as well. And I'm also, the neat thing that I think that I bring to the voters is that um, I've got all this local government experience, and, and uh, people who know me know that it's real important for me to sit down and listen to people, to hear their issues, and then take those forward. Um, I'm, uh, I, I've got 88 boards of elections to meet, to get to know. These are the experts within their counties, and I'm, I'm anxious to sit down with them, talk to them about uh, how elections go in their counties and their take on electoral reform. And uh, so it's, it's going to be exciting. and. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. No. Like every candidate for Secretary of State, you say you're going to be fair and right. nonpartisan. Right. I want to see how just how nonpartisan you are. <laughs> Democrats are backing one plan to change the way we draw mm -hmm. legislative districts. Uh, Republicans are backing another plan. Both are aimed at supposedly taking the politics out of this line drawing. Right. The League of Women Voters and other groups who call themselves good government, right. uh, they say both plans have good elements. Right. Let's combine the two. Are you willing to endorse not just the Democrats' plan, but also the Republican plan and say, let's put both of these together. I'll tell you, Bill, I'm very, very much in favor of people sitting down and working out differences like this. That's, that's the process. That's our great American democratic process. Uh, the whole idea is that you have people who come up with great ideas on 
you know, two sides or three sides or four sides, and they come together and look for common ground, and certainly I support that process. One, one of the things that comes to mind, though, is that Senator John Husted is the sponsor of the mm -hmm. Senate version, we should point out. Mm -hmm. I mean, right now you have an apportionment board of which you would be a member of mm -hmm. Secretary of State if you're elected, but it is highly partisan. It's a, it comes down to which political right. party controls that. His yeah. bill basically creates a supermajority right. where you would need five of seven members to approve these legislative lines. Right. Taking John Husted out of the equation, uh -huh. would it not be a good idea to have a bipartisan committee in need of sure. a supermajority? Is he, that concept not good? It's, this, these are all things that we need to talk about. What I find fascinating uh, about the, uh, the the Democratic bill that has just been dropped like it was just like a week ago is that it it takes the apportionment board and makes it more of an, admi an administrative role because it takes all the line drawing and puts it uh, puts it in the rules in the Constitution so so that the the apportionment board is no longer in you know doing backroom deals and drawing lines in the you know in in a back room it, it's all open it's fair it's balanced and it becomes nonpartisan we have more competitive elections, something that obviously I'd be very much in favor of, and I think it's these these things, we're going to spend months here talking about these things, and I think that's our process. And just, I'm looking just as we start the campaign, a, a super, super majority? Just I'm happy to talk about it. I, I've heard that that's, that that's part of, the, uh, of Mr. Houston's bill, and looking forward to talking about those things. You know, his bill takes, looks at the, the concept uh, and the, the makeup of the apportionment board right. itself. Um, who draws the lines? Uh, the Democratic bill looks at the way the lines are drawn and make, it makes sure that it's fair and balanced. So no firm endorsement of the Senate version, but you're looking at it. We're, you know, we're going we're to look at all of it, and okay. we're going to talk. We're going to talk about the good points and the bad points of all these these things. Uh, I can tell you that this bill, uh, I'm fascinated uh, and very encouraged by this, this the, the bill that the Democrats have have dropped here because. Um, it's unprecedented. There, there, there is no other in, in, in the United States that brings such fairness uh, to the process. And uh, we do that, and uh, we're going to have a you know, better, fairer uh, election of people who are going to be more responsive to their constituencies because you know, they're not going to win by much because it's right. going to be a great, it, you know, it's going to be a great uh, debate every election cycle rather than having people just heir apparent to a seat. Right. Jennifer. I think what intrigues me about these kind of conversations, Mary Ellen, is it's it's one of these those conversations that those of us who follow state politics get, we're interested in, we understand the importance of, but it might be lost a little bit on the average voter. Right. So as you get into this election, as you get competitive in this race, how do you draw those how do you compare and contrast with with your likely mm -hmm. opponent in a way that voters will understand, understand the difference, and well in your mind see the advantage of voting right. for you? I think we have to talk about the end result. That we're all trying to get to, uh, and and not get lost in the weeds when, uh, of particulars here, uh, and make sure that people have. See, I believe in the voters, and I believe that they're intelligent and they make right choices, as given the right information and the right ability to vote. Uh, and uh, if they're if they're given the you know the su summarized information and the opportunity to get more information. Uh, you know, online or elsewhere uh, regarding uh, the proposals. I think that's the right thing to do. And so you're right. I, I've been warned over and over again. Don't don't fall into the particulars of this. You know, being a bit of a wonk myself on these <laughs> things. Um, you know, but <clears throat> talk about talk talk about the end result and what we're what we're trying to get to, and uh, that that will connect more. I'm looking forward to talking to folks about it. Though. All right, very good. good. Uh, we have to wrap up this segment, okay. but. Uh, Will you match dollar for dollar fundraising, John Houston? I don't think I have to match dollar for dollar fundraising. I think that uh, I, I think I'll outwork uh, my opponent, whoever it may be. Understand, he's got a primary. Right. Uh, so, uh, so it's going to be a wonderful year. I'm so much looking forward to it. O'Shaughnessy. O'Shaughnessy. Very electable name. As we've learned. Good to <laughs> see. Longest you. name on the ballot. Right. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mary Ellen. Thank Coming up you. next. Uh,